our next task is uh, to do chapter 6 on the uniform boundedness principle or the banach steinhaus theorem. So um, I think we're going to be focused on what I call the uniform boundedness principle. And then it has a corollary, which is also called banach steinhaus it, It's unfortunate there are two different results called banach steinhaus and it uh, depends on who teaches the module, who calls which one which. But we'll be... The, the stronger of the two is called the uniform boundless principle, and the other one is a corollary. So here's the uniform boundless principle. Is again a result about Banach spaces, but this time only X has to be a Banach space, and Y doesn't. There are actually some subtle var variations. There are some varieties in this result as well, but this is the one that I'm going to call the uniform boundedness principle. And it's X that has to be complete for this one. That's the code, that's the domain where you're mapping from. And the idea is you've got a set of bounded operators. Maybe it could be an uncountable family. But you've got a, an, a, a set or a collection of bounded operators from X to Y, and you want to know whether there's some uniform bound on the operator norm. So each one has got an operator norm, but the operator norms, of course, can vary. And of course, if you look, say you looked at all of the bounded operators between X and Y, then of course, although each one has got a finite operator norm, there's no bound on the operator norms, because particularly if you take any odd operator that's not zero and you scale it up, its norm's going to get very big. Uh, so you don't usually expect a collection, of, a collection of bounded operators to be a bounded collection of operators. <laughs> okay? So you don't normally expect to find a global bound on all the norms in your collection. But perhaps... You can sometimes. Obviously, if, it's, if you take a finite number of operators that are bounded, then you could just take the maximum of their operator norms, and it would be a bounded collection of operators with some global bound. Um, but if you've got an infinite collection of bounded operators, then, again, you don't know. But perhaps you can put some condition on that does it. And, it. and, of course, there's an immediate necessary condition that if your operators are bounded in operator norm, then it must be that for each point of the space you're working on, you get a bounded set of images. Because they're going to be at most, all of everything's going to be at most a constant in norm times the original norm. This global constant bounding your operator norms. So you need what I call pointwise boundedness to have any chance. Pointwise boundedness means that for each point in X, it's this condition here, that for each point in X, there should be some constant so that for every operator in your family, the norm of the image is at most that constant. So this is not allowed to depend on t, but it does, is allowed at the moment to depend on x. You're going to need that if you're going to be bound in an operator norm, because if you are bound in an operator norm, then whatever that bound on the operator norms is, you can take that times norm x to be your mx. So you, you're going to need this. The uniform boundedness principle says that that's sufficient as well. If you're pointwise bounded as a collection of bounded operators on a Banach space X, then you're uniformly bounded. There's a, a global bound on the operator norms. And that's what it means. So that's what this says here. You've got a whole load of continuous linear operators defined on X, taking values in Y. Y can be normed. doesn't matter, because you can always complete Y anyway. Um, and then you'd be talking about maps into a Banach space. It's X that matters. Okay, then, uh, as long as they're pointwise bounded, that's this condition here, for each point X, we can find a constant that's allowed to depend on X, so that the norm of the image is at most of that constant that depends on X, for all T in your family, then the sum big constant capital K so that the norms of all the operators in your family are less than or equal to that big constant. So this is the pointwise bounded uh, 
And this is uniformly bounded. At least this is the sense in which we're talking about uniformly bounded. So you have to understand what that it, that's the sense in which we're talking about uniform boundedness. In the usual sense of uniformly bounded, you can talk about being uniformly bounded on the unit ball. And then it will actually turn back into a completely standard notion of uniform boundedness. And we know that linear maps are determined by how they behave on, a unit, on the unit ball, so that's a perfectly reasonable way of thinking about it. Right. So the proof is another one of these symmetric convex sets about the origin um, Bayer category theorem arguments. So typical Bayer category theorem proof. Let me make sure I've got the notation in front of me. And we'll come back and do the corollary afterwards. So here's your uh, proof of the uniform boundedness principle. That's proof of 6.1. I think this is slightly easier than the open mapping theorem. We'll set A n to be those x in x with the following property that for all t in your family, we have the norm of tx is less than equal to n. So notice that's a subset of x. Then you can check the following easily. We'll take this as obvious, but you can check it. A n is a closed subset of x and of course n is a natural number here. A n is a closed subset of x and is convex Things like this involving norm of Tx, it's quite easy to check that you'll end up with a convex set of x's. Um, and symmetric about the origin, which is pretty obvious. If you replace x with minus x, you don't change the norm of Tx, so that bit's completely obvious. So it's already closed. We don't have to close it, which is nice. Um, I claim that the union of these ANs is the whole of X. Well, to see this, we'll let X be an X. Then norm of t of x is at most mx, that constant that depends only on x, for all t in f. So for n in n with um, n greater equal to mx, x is in an. We use the pointwise boundedness. The family is pointwise bounded, so the set of images of x is bounded with norm most mx. So all you have to do is go far enough along your your sequence of sets until you get to an n that's big enough that n is, is at least as big as mx, and then you're home. So we've got symmetric, about the origin, convex, closed, and the union of a sequence of them being the whole of x. So what do we quote now?
we will get that in, we will get that zero is in the interior of, the, of some a end at some, in, in a minute, but first we need to quote a theorem. Bayer category theorem. Okay, you, the most common form of the Bayer category theorem, if a unit of a sequence of closed sets is a complete metric space, then at least one of those sets has non empty interior. So by the Bayer category theorem, by B, B, C, T, there exists an N in the natural numbers such that the interior of A, N is non empty. But then, Since a n is, is convex and symmetric about zero, no, sorry, it's symmetric about zero and convex. We have that naught is in the interior of a n. So there exists an R greater than zero with, and again, we can take the closed ball, sent on zero, in X, radius R contained in AN. You can get an open ball in, so make it slightly smaller and you get the closed ball in. Then for all X in That ball, we have for all t in F that norm of Tx is at most n. This particular n we've got here. Of course, I'm supposed to say something about the operator norm. So which ball should I be working with? This is the ball radius r. If I want to talk about operator norms, which x should I be considering? In which ball? When you're trying to find out what the operator norm of something is, what's, what's the definition of the operator norm? Unit ball. We normally would use a unit ball. We want to know how big can the image be if you're working on the unit ball. So we've got to scale everything up. We'll scale by a factor 1 over r. So scaling by 1 over r for all x in the ball in x set of the naught radius 1, the closed unit ball, we have for all t and f that norm Tx is at most n over r. n, of course, was probably quite big, because you probably had to go quite a long way, and r, well, um, as usual with the usual proviso, actually, you can scale up and down using n and 1 over n, and, and you could have done something like that. R is probably quite small, because you've got a small neighbor to the origin, so 1 over R is probably quite big, but it doesn't matter. You can just set capital K to be N over R. And then we see that for every T in F, the operating norm of T is at most capital K. By above. all t in, the, in your family, we have the operating norm of t is at most k. And we're finished.
Any questions on, uh, on that proof? It's a typical Bayer category theorem symmetric convex set proof. Okay, so we now have the corollary 6.2 Banach Steinhaus. This is a, a nice fact about sequences of operators that converge point wise. So it's an immediate corollary of the previous one. So you've got a Banach space, and you've got a norm space, and you've got a sequence of continuous linear operators from x to y. And it so happens that they converge point-wise to some other operator t. So they converge to something, but we don't know yet whether t is continuous. So they converge point-wise to some map t. Now, it's very easy to see that t is linear. So it just from the fact that these linear operators can, if a sequence of linear operators converges pointwise to another, op another function, it's easy to show that thing is another linear map. So that's um, the linearity, the fact that T is linear is, is easy. It's the continuity that is interesting. That's an easy exercise. Um, but Actually, to the continuous linear operator, and you can also prove that uh, these Tn's are bounded, and that the norm, the operator norm of T, is less than to that bound. So, why does that work? Well, because this sequence is convergent, that implies it's bounded. Every convergent sequence is bounded. So you can set mx to be the supremum of the modulus of tnx over n in the natural numbers. And that's finite. Because it's a convergent sequence, as n varies, the constant depends on x. But for each x, you get a convergent sequence, so it's a bounded sequence. And so you can, uh, and this is a norm. Okay, and then you've got your mx, and then that means you can apply the uniform boundedness principle. The uniform boundedness principle. shows that this supremum is finite. And then once you've got that, this other bit about the operator norm of T is, is dead easy. That's immediate because it's just the limit of these things and you've got a, a global bound on how big those things can be. So that's an immediate consequence. Um, but of course, the early TNs don't contribute because it's the limit of the TNs you're using. So it's only the later TNs that really matter. And so instead of using soup, you can use lim soup, which is the version of soup where you throw away the early terms and you only care about the late ones. So, so, it's an, so once you've got to soup and you realize it's about limits, you quite quickly get to lim soup as a, as a consequence. But one thing that may surprise you is that what you don't get is that the TNs actually necessarily converge to TN norm. In fact, sometimes you can have some, some norm 1 operators and the limit operator has got norm 0. <laughs> In other words, they can com so a, a sequence of norm 1 operators can converge pointwise to the 0 operator, and that's not difficult. Um, but that doesn't violate this condition because 0 is less than or equal to 1. <laughs> So you get an inequality one way round, but it can be strict.
it can be that all the norms of the TNs are 1, but the, the limit operator is a 0 operator. No real problem in this setting. And you can think of examples of that. And that brings us to the end of the section on uniform boundedness. Any questions on the uniform boundedness section? Okay. So that means that all that remains is the material on commutative Banach algebras and the session on measure, measure theory, which we're doing next week, and the optional revision session in, uh, in May. And, of course, um, for those of you who've got assessed coursework to do and, uh, in G14 TAN, um, and the, also the oral presentation in May as well. But uh, that's only for G14 TAN students, not for G14 FUN students.